um, just about all of our common crops that you'll see indoors, um, strawberries, raspberries, um, tomatoes, <coughs> peppers, cucumbers, and certainly in the ornamentals, just about all of them um, can get powdery mildew. There are a lot of resistant varieties out there. Resistance doesn't mean that they um, don't have some degree of susceptibility to it, but um, somebody who knows what they're doing in pest management in the greenhouse um, can work with resistance and come up with a pretty clean crop. And so it, there, is, there is no such thing as a, um, as a plant that just doesn't get powdery mildew. Even tomatoes that are um, highly resistant to it under good conditions, good conditions for powdery mildew, you can get, you can get it on tomatoes. And of course, petunias are close relatives of tomatoes and they get powdery mildew nicely depending on variety. So powdery mildew is kind of a simple one to scout for. Um, you have to do a lot of looking at leaves, especially the bottom side. But the first thing that most growers are gonna see is on the bottom of a leaf, they'll see a little pencil eraser size uh, circle of a white to a very light gray powdery mildew getting started. That's easily the most, the, the most common symptom. And by the time you see that, you know you've got infections scattered throughout that area and it's time to really do something. So proper scouting, certainly once a week, perhaps more often is what you need to do. But the other side of that too is um, knowing what stage your crop is in. Powdery mildew is a disease, um, especially on resistant varieties where they'll do a great job holding it off while the variety is vegetative. But as the plant starts to go into fruiting or being more mature or just plain old getting older, they become more susceptible to it. And so as plants go from being in that highly resistant young growth state over to being more, um, more susceptible to it, more scouting has to happen and you have to be better at being ahead of the game on that one. So this is, this is all about knowing your crop and knowing the stage that you're going to get it in typical conditions that everybody says that it happens in is between 70 and 85 or 86 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, you'll get the typical thunderstorm in the evening and the next thing you know you'll see powdery mildew within a couple days. But I've seen it happen in way outside of those conditions to a crop that is stressed. We're going back to the cucumber example because I've worked with them so much is once you get a heavy load of cucumbers hanging there um, the crop becomes really susceptible to powdery mildew, almost regardless of the variety and regardless of the growing conditions that they're in. The crop is just there. The spores are there. And powdery mildew is kind of interesting. Um, an awful lot of the fungal diseases that we deal with require free moisture. You actually have to have droplets. Powdery mildew does not require free moisture at all. Um, just, the, just the amount of moisture that's typically there on a leaf surface just due to uh, um, just the way the plant grows. Um, it just, there's always humidity there. That's all it really takes. And with the spore count, powdery mildew like botrytis is a very high spore producer. So it's not unusual to have very, very high pressure just waiting for the plants to become more susceptible as they go older or into a fruiting stage. Um, if you're a young plant producer, you probably don't need to worry about it quite so much. Your turnaround is really quick and you're moving those plants out to somebody else. But if you're going to mature plants, if you're going to finish them, if you're going to take them out to fruiting, um, then you've got to be on top of it. Um, we produce a product called Regalia and Regalia CG for indoor growers. Uh, Regalia is giant knotweed extract and its mode of action, it's an SAR, ISR material. So it turns on plants defense systems. We use proactively, uh, we've got just hundreds of research trials demonstrating clearly that when you use regalia proactively, it does a great job of preventing powdery mildew or at least keeping it so slow that it gives you time to react better. Uh, regalia tank mixes very well with quite a number of other products, um, far more than I could go into in this short interview. Uh, but the most common material that I see folks using powder um, regalia with is the combination of regalia plus mancozeb. If you're not an organic grower, regalia is certified organic. It's, it's OMRI listed. Um, but if, uh, if you're looking for a tank mix that just works extraordinarily well, the combination of the mancozeb materials, diethane, mancozeb, pancozeb, manzate, those materials with regalia are really potent for managing powdery mildew. The whole idea here is to be proactive. Once you start seeing powdery mildew, I should say by the time you see powdery mildew, you've got it a lot more places than you're going to spot the first time it happens. 
And so regalia, because it's an SAR material and it activates plants' own defense systems, the idea is that if you use it regularly from the time of transplanting or the time that you see the first true leaf on a plant, the likelihood that you're going to see serious impact from powdery mildew is greatly reduced. Growers are always responsible for doing the jar test before you put that, before you put regalia in your tank and start mixing it with something that you've never done before. There's lots of good instructions online for how to do a jar test. I recommend them very strongly. And if it's a crop that you've never applied it to, make sure you apply it to a handful of plants. Um, give it at least 48 hours to see whether you see any phytotoxic reaction. Um, if you don't, the likelihood that you're ready to go is, a, is really strong, and then go ahead and make the rest of the crop application.